Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Discovery's Base Camp One. I'm Dr. Discoveries. I'm Ranger Rebecca. Guess what, Rebecca? We've what? got invertebrates. Awesome. Creepy crawlies we're going to talk to you guys about. Would any of you guys like to come introduce yourselves? <laughs> Hello, my name's Colton Sparks. Colton, good job, buddy. Hi, my name is Ariana Bessler. Gavin, wow. all right. My name is Carson. Good job, Carson. Guys, there's a little one right behind you. See if he'll come up here real quick. <laughs> Are you coming? I think he's in his own world right now. Xander, come on up here. <laughs> Put him up here. Old spider. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to talk about invertebrates. <laughs> Fascinating. You know, uh, the, these animals, they don't have vertebrates. They're called invertebrates. They make up like 95% of the animal population. Wait a second. So they don't have vertebrae. What, let's talk about what are vertebrae first. Vertebrae is a bony structure that a lot of animals do have that supports their body. We have vertebrae. It's what helps us be able to stand up right. But a lot of animals, like insects, arachnids, uh, crustaceans like crabs, um, jellyfish even, what else? Can you guys think of any invertebrates? Any, any? They're like 95%. Sharks do have backbones. Fish do have backbones. What about starfish? Ooh, there you go. Starfish. Yeah, starfish are invertebrates. Jellyfish. Those are two ocean invertebrates. Now, What's SpongeBob SquarePants? A sponge. Sponges are invertebrates. They actually <laughs> are. And, and arachnids. Arachnids are great invertebrates. You have things such as cockroaches. That's an invertebrate. What about, do you, any of you guys go fishing? Okay, everybody here goes fishing, that's awesome. What do you use at, on your hook? Yes, a worm, you use worms on you. Worms would be a case of an invertebrate. Now, now, we have the backbone to have our structure. What about other animals? What kind of structure do they have? So they have something called an exoskeleton. So we have a skeleton, right? It's our bones that hold us up. but arachnids, insects, um, mollusks, like we talked about, they have an exoskeleton, which is meaning their skin, sort of, is their skeleton. And that's what holds them together and holds everything inside their bodies in place. They actually even shed this exoskeleton and grow new exoskeletons. So every invertebrate um, has that kind of Thing, except for like some worms and mollusks, they're more just jelly-like. Everything's floating around in a coelom. So, so like a jellyfish, <laughs> that's like a balloon. It's a coelom, and it's like a fluid inside. If you were able to touch one, it would feel like a water balloon. Yes. And that's how these bodies are formed. Bodies that don't have vertebrae rely on other things such as exoskeleton or coelom to actually put their bodies together or to keep their bodies together. You mentioned earlier that they make up 95% of animal life on Earth. So that means there are tons more invertebrates than there are vertebrates. Can you guys think of some animals that are vertebrates? 
Wolves, yeah, wolves would be vertebrates. They have a backbone. Deer, yeah. Lions. Sharks. Cheetahs. What about you and I? Yeah, we're vertebrates too. So check this out. One thing that invertebrates are good for is eating. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to eat them, okay? <laughs> but a lot of things do eat invertebrates. Birds. Yeah. Um, lizards. Guess what turtles eat? Turtles sometimes eat jellyfish, mm -hmm. starfish. Fish will eat aquatic invertebrates. <laughs> so invertebrates are very, very important to our ecosystem. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the invertebrates that we brought today. Like this here is Dirty Harry. Mm -hmm. Dirty Harry is a Mexican red-legged turtle. An exoskeleton. Come up here. I want you guys to see this. Dirty Harry, your skeleton <laughs> is on the inside. His is on the outside. It helps protect him. Okay? So, he don't have no backbone. He has the exoskeleton. Now, what makes a spider a spider? Because spiders are invertebrates. What makes that? What's a good sign? You said it. Eight legs. Eight legs. If it's got eight legs, guess what, guys? It's a spider, okay? Now, if you look closely, you'll see what looks like ten legs. Those two up front are not true legs. Those are called pedipoles, okay? Those are used more for feeling and for grabbing, kind of like your arms or hands. They grab a cricket and uh, they eat it, okay? And they use those two fronts to actually pull the cricket into their mouth area. All right, so that's Dirty Harry. Would one of you like to hold Dirty Harry? Ooh, okay. you guys are brave. Okay, you ready? <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that spiders are arachnids, um, and all arachnids are invertebrates, but there are arachnids that aren't spiders. Do you guys know what ticks are? Have you ever heard of a tick? Those little round things that get on you or your dog and they suck your blood. Those are also arachnids, um, but they don't have eight legs, so they're not a spider. Does that make sense? <laughs> now, guess what? A lot of people will ask me, how do you know whether it's a male or a female? Mm. Guess what? It's hard to tell with these arachnids whether they're male or female, but I'll give you a clue. Dirty Harry here, I've had him over five years. <laughs> he used to molt, okay? So, that means he used to shed his exoskeleton. Guess what? He don't molt anymore. And if a spider stops molting after five years or so, chances are it's a boy. Okay, the boys will stop molting after a while. Now, you brought another invertebrate. I Can did. we show these guys? And I'll put Dirty Harry back where he so, belongs. I have a My question about oh, sure. Yeah. Um, how much? So. How many webs can you make a day? Like a web? Ooh. How well, many so tarantulas don't actually go around making lots of webs like other spiders do. Other spiders will make webs up in trees, up on people's porches, and they'll go hang out in the web, and they depend on the web to actually catch, catch. their food. Guess what? Dirty Harry, he has big fangs. He digs burrows in the sides of walls or down in the ground. And the only silk that he spends is usually a little bit of silk for a silk door or like a placemat in front of his burrow. <laughs> a welcome mat. A welcome mat. For all the insects So if the eat. insect steps on that <laughs> mat, Dirty Harry knows about it. It's like, welcome to my lair. And then he eats them. Okay? <laughs> also, what are his predators? Ooh. Predators for uh, spiders would be birds. Mm -hmm. And it would also be... Um, some lizards uh, will Some eat Some lizards will eat west. spiders. <laughs> okay. yeah. Now, we've got another invertebrate here. Won't you tell us what we got, uh, Ranger Rebecca? All right, so this is my friend, uh, the crawfish from Heritage Farm. So he, though, unlike tarantula, is native to our area. You could find a crayfish in your creek, if you have a creek running through your backyard. I'm gonna try and get them out here. They do have pinchers, so there we go. All right, so, many nicknames. 
crawdad, crayfish, crawfish. It kind of depends on where you're from, what you call them. I call them a crawdad. Um, but they like to hide underneath rocks uh, like this one in uh, creeks and streams that are pretty shallow. And they also have an exoskeleton. They can shed this entire kind of shell um, around them. And sometimes you'll even see just their shell floating by in a creek. And you think it's a crawdad, but it's not. It's just the, the shell that he shed. See this tail here? Mm -hmm. He actually swims backwards. So whenever he is afraid of a, of a predator or of you and I, he pushes off with that tail and swims backwards and buries himself under a rock. Um, they require clean water to be able to live because they breathe through these specialized gills, which means that the water around them goes inside their body whether they want it to or not. Um, and so the water has to be pretty clean for them to survive. So if crawdads are in a creek, chances are it's a pretty good clean creek. But if you use a lot of pesticides or herbicides or things like that, it can contaminate the water and hurt these guys. So it's pretty interesting. If you find a crawdad, chances are that water is better quality than other water. Um, crawdads are crustaceans. That's the family they belong to. The spider was an arachnid. Uh, crawdads are crustaceans, much like a crab. People think it looks like a lobster, right? Yeah. Well, he's. I tell people he's a freshwater lobster. You know what freshwater is? Uh -huh. It's not salt water, right? It's not the ocean. So the lobsters live in the ocean in the same family as a crawdad, both crustaceans. But crawdads live in freshwater in our creeks and streams. What, is, what, what do a crawdad, what does crawdad eat? What, what do they eat? Crawdads, that's a great question. Crawdads eat a lot of things, but they like to eat minnows. Do you guys know what minnows are? Mm -hmm. Teeny, teeny, tiny little fish, right? They like to eat minnows. They like to eat um, larva of insects. Do you know what larva means? Mm -hmm. A larva? Like, like an egg? Yeah, egg or a young uh, life form of an insect on bottoms of rocks and creeks. like dragonfly larva, mayfly larva, they like to eat that kind of stuff. Now with arachnids, um, with Dirty Harry, if he loses an arm, hmm. he actually can grow it back. What about uh, the, your crawdad? Unfortunately, not the case for my crawdad, um, and, but they can survive with just one. You'll see them sometimes hanging in there, hanging out with just one. <laughs> Sure. So, um, do they sleep? Huh. You know, I would assume that they have to sleep at some time, but I don't actually know the answer to that question, but they probably do have to sleep. Yeah, I don't <laughs> see everything. eyelids, but yeah. let, they can let's, sleep with their eyes let's open. take snakes, for example. Mm -hmm. You go in and you see a snake sleeping. <laughs> yeah, they probably they have sleep no with their eyelids. eyes open. So, a lot of animals, like sharks, Sharks sleep while they're moving, mm -hmm. okay? He likes to go under rocks, so I and bet they sleep under rocks. So, um, also, how do you tell if they're male or female? That's actually interesting. You can tell whether they're male or female by if they have an extra little set of what looks like legs down here. This one does not, so it's a female. If it had an extra set of little legs right here where I'm pointing, then it would be a male. So you gotta check under the hood, huh? <laughs> well, the crawl dally. Crawl, crawl, whatever, crawl, what is crawl it? Crawl dad. Crawl dad. It should be called a crawl mom. Called <laughs> yeah, there you go. They They're not a fish either, so it's weird that they call them crayfish or crawfish. Do they have any predators? Um, they do, actually. All kinds. All kinds of predators. Lots of things like to Birds, eat crawdads. Fish. Birds, fish, um, water snakes even. So, uh, turtles. <laughs> hey, Ranger Rebecca, check this out. Here wow. is another invertebrate. This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. These guys can get up to about five inches long, okay? <laughs> and again, they have the hard exoskeleton that keeps their body together. They have a special ability because some of the predators for Madagascar hissing cockroaches are birds. So a bird will come by and he'll see that cockroach. Sorry, buddy, this is gonna be traumatic. Graphic. And all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> He grabs the cockroach, he flies away, and guess what the cockroach does? He starts hissing, he goes shh, shh, and the bird goes, oh my gosh, It's a snake. I must have just picked up a venomous snake. So he lets the cockroach go, the cockroach floats to the ground and lives to be a cockroach another day. <laughs> Are cockroaches important? Yes. They're very important because no one, number one, 
they help us clean, okay? Anything left on the forest floor, they're on <laughs> it, okay? They're cleaning it up a little bit. So they're bit. a scavenger? They're, they're they, a detrivore, yeah. Yeah, they will eat up whatever the other animals leave. Also, what else are they good for? Uh, I had a question. Sure, go ahead. If it's like up in the air, how would it float down? Because <laughs> well, the air weighs more than it does, so it just kind of drops, like drops, drops. Oh. And then it hits the ground. See, when something's this small, a uh, fall's not going to hurt it, okay? Now, the one of the big dealios with these guys is that these guys feed a lot of other animals, okay? So a lot of birds, a lot of snakes, a lot of lizards, everything relies on this for food and it, it's great food for every type of animal how about if we do a food web Real yeah quick, i have one two questions actually okay so since he's a cro 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 cockroach can he like shrink down and like go into through doors he can fit like in tight places yes they're known for flattening themselves <laughs> and second question since he's from madagascar does he like to move it move it <laughs> he loves to move it, move it. Move that was it, a good question. <laughs> so let's do a food web and show you the importance of all these animals, including cockroaches. Back to Discovery's Base Camp One. Are you ready for a food web? I'm ready. Yes, let's do a food web. Come on up here, kids. Okay. Re Ranger Rebecca, won't you tell us what we're doing and I'll assist the kids. Okay, so a food web stands for a chain of who we too in the animal kingdom. But it all starts with the sun, right? So do you want to be the sun? Go ahead and take a hold of the string. Hold it up high. The sun provides energy for all the plant life on Earth. Plants make food using energy from the sun. So the sun feeds plants. Would you like to be our plant life on Earth? All right. So you are. You stand for all the plants. Lots and lots of animals eat plants. Every herbivore on this Earth needs plants to live, and the sun feeds the plants. Now the plants are going to feed our invertebrate, our insect today. So you're going to be an insect that eats plants. So go ahead and take hold of this string. So all of these insects that eat plants rely on the sun to give them their plant life so that the insects can live. Now, do you want to say how, something? How about if, if I'm the next one, then we'll pass it over to him. Perfect. All right. So what's an animal that would eat an insect that you want to be? A bird. I want to be a bird. All right. So he wants to be a bird. So lots of birds eat insects, right? So um, any insectivorous bird will eat the insects that depend on plant life, that depend on the sun. Do you see how this is working? All right. So now you're going to be something that eats a bird. What's something that eats a bird, do you think? A wolf. A wolf might eat a bird. Yeah. So here we go. Go ahead and take hold of your string. And then now I'm going to be the top of every food chain. 
a human. Not that humans eat wolves, but they could be a farmer that kills them from attacking uh, their um, livestock, and that would be the only reason why a wolf would not be the apex predator. Uh, humans typically are always the apex on a food web. So what do you guys think will happen? Make a hypothesis here. If one member of this food web were to go extinct, were to die out, um, I think the whole food web would be messed up because if we don't have that member, then some another animal won't have food, and um, and then another animal would be overpopulated. Exactly. So we're gonna have our insect cut out because we just talked about invertebrates and how important they are for food for other animals. So go ahead and let go of the string. Okay, so now, oh, you can hold on to the string. So now our insects are gone, so our bird doesn't have as much food to eat, so some birds' populations might suffer, so let's have our bird drop out. Well, wait a second. Now our wolf can't eat many birds, and so now our wolf population is going to drop out. So you can go ahead and drop the string. So see how <laughs> just having the insect population go away affected everything else on top? Now, it didn't affect our sun and our plants, but it still may in the long run because when these animals are gone to help maintain plant life from being overgrown and everything, the whole world would change. All of our ecosystems would change. So every single member of a food web is important to the environment, even those creepy crawly insect invertebrates. All right, give yourselves a hand and have a seat. Let's hear it for our volunteers. Yeah. So is it kind of like hunters? Like, so you know how there's many deer? Mm -hmm. Good amount of deer population? Let's say no one hunted. Mm. Isn't, wouldn't the deer expand? Sorry. So deer, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. And we have hunters that kill them, which is good, but some people think it's bad. And some people want to get rid of hunters. But if we get rid of hunters, there would be more deer. So is that kind of like the web? Yeah, if we didn't have another apex predator introduced, if hunting were to be banned, we'd have to like introduce wolves or uh, more coyotes or something like that to help take care of the deer population. The, the nature has to be balanced. Otherwise, it'll fix itself in sometimes alarming ways. And when you talked about the hunters keeping the deer under control, that is kind of controversial. And some scientists say, no, they'll keep themselves under control. I think not. But the a important lot of people thing is laws and regulations that yeah. make sure that people don't take too many of the animal that they're hunting. Uh, because then that's when problems begin. If everybody follows the rules for only hunting the count that they are allowed to take, then it should be all right. So if you have mm -hmm. too much of any animal, they will out eat the area, they will spread disease quickly, and you know they'll hurt themselves in that way. So it's better to have a controlled natural environment. Any other questions about the food web? As you can see by the web itself, even cockroaches are very important. I took a trip to Costa Rica we were not even allowed to bring insect repellent into the rainforest because their ecosystem is so balanced, they don't want anything disturbing or destroying their ecosystem. So something as small as a cockroach. What about ticks? Yep. Ticks are food, food for, for one of your favorite animals. I love possums. possums. <laughs> so if we don't have things such as roaches, insects, and stuff that are kind of icky to us, Guess what? A lot of animals don't have the food and nutrients that they need to survive. All and right. Thank you for coming out and seeing Discovery's Base Camp One with Dr. Discoveries and Ranger Rebecca. See you next time.